Welcome. Some months ago we did a clip on yin arrogance and we got a lot of reactions on that, which uh, I, was, I was pleased with that very much. And somebody asked me to continue on that theme, actually several people, and to explain a little bit more about the whole energetics of this um, not being present, of the typical state of uh, I don't know anyway, nobody can touch me. I explained in the first clip, if you have not seen that, it uh, would be interesting to look at it after you've seen this, that we react very strongly on arrogant people because it has a tone of aggression. We don't like that very much. What we don't see very well is that there's a, a much bigger layer of yin arrogance, I call it. It's, it's not like there's anger in it, there's more rejection in there. It's, it's perfectly okay to be in a group and to just fly away, to think about, oh, I hope we don't eat turnips again this afternoon. But while you're talking with the business partner or with, with your children even, with somewhere else, and then you're nodding, you, have, you know, you just have to nod your head after, uh, every 10 seconds to stay safe. Everybody leaves you alone. I survived school like that. And it was perfectly okay to sit there for 10 years and to nod every one minute and nobody ever bo bothered me there. Why did I do that? Well, first of all, I had the impression nobody's really interested. I could get away with that. I found it completely boring. And so I was doing somewhere, so, something somewhere else. And that is the question. For those of you who can recognize that, yin arrogant state of being confused, I'm not really there, I don't understand, I mean, I'm, I'm not me, I'm, this is not my life, I don't know how I got it. If you, you know this kind of rejection of reality and the habit to disperse yourself and be confused, then the first question is, where are you? Because people say, oh, I'm not here. Well, this might be already a vague concept, what here is. Maybe you don't really know what that is. But you're always somewhere. I've never seen somebody, even the dead people, well, they are somewhere, right? And they probably know better where they are than most of the people that are alive. Because many of them, they don't know where they are. Everybody is moving from... You see, I made several steps to go to somewhere else. You couldn't see it with the camera, but I was going somewhere else. I mean, if you just suddenly get confused because this person asks you a question you don't really like because you hate this guy anyway, and so on and so on, it creates a mechanism of rejection. Slow motion. You move, but the, the idea you have is, oh, it suddenly happened. That's the irresponsible way. The responsible way is to get impact on this yin attitude. It's like, I choose, because I think you're an asshole, to go to that place and I'm making this kind of steps. Why do I go there? Because it's like my shelter that I've learned to be safe in during the past 40 years. And that's the reality. We all trained ourselves very unconsciously to go to several caves in the mind. It's like a psycho-emotional safe place where we can hide. When we know that, then we have already impact because we can separate being here and not being here. And we take responsibility for the movement between the two places. Makes a big difference. Doesn't make it comfortable, because now you start to see, become aware that you choose to be not here. You start to feel the impact of yin arrogance and also how your energy just flies away to these old games of past. So when you're there, then it's more about why do I choose to go there? And it's always the same thing. If you haven't been here for a long time, it's quite intense. The intensity of the consciousness, the energy is so much stronger that it makes us fearful, fearful to be rejected by the others, 
but we don't realize that we have put a lot of illusion, not true self, of ourselves in all these people. So when you're more present, they are going to have a kind of a hard time in the beginning because they don't... Who is the real one now? It requires cultivation. And every time, like... Okay, well, when you were talking like that to me, I get a little bit insecure and then I have this attitude to step up, but now I'm completely back. Please continue. Then I take responsibility of not being there and I don't push the other one also to disappear. Right? Things are very clear now. You can be clear on being here, you probably don't have to say it, and then now I put consciousness in the unconscious place. So, becoming aware of the fear also, the tendency to move out but not to do it, or to be transparent in the actions that you take when you want to disappear or, or be confused. I'm not confused, I'm just getting insecure about how you see this. Then, okay, you see again, I'm coming back and I'm explaining what's happening. So communication is the next step. You communicate about where you are and what triggers your tendency to disappear. Again, makes a very big difference. By doing it, we start to get connection to a layer of the ego where it has most impact on us. There is a strong tendency to get in an internal discussion and also with spiritual people. It's like the, the spiritual being is talking to the ego. Well, that's a little branch of the ego, but it's quite still an innocent one. The deeper layers of the ego re reach to a root of the physical body and the protection, the maintenance of this physical body. And there your ego is definitely your protector. It's a friend. It's not the enemy. When you're in these voices, then the ego is like pushing your mind into all kind of uh, actions that you don't really like. I wouldn't pay too much attention to that. It's much more important to start to feel these instinctive reactions that you have related to the fear. The fear brings you much closer to the body ego responses. So not so much the voices, the Aladdin ghost out of the bottle, but more the feeling of the ghost into the bottle where it belongs. If you study and if you become aware and conscious about these responses, it's like you're constantly there, even if you're not there, you will see the tendency to disappear or to escape becomes less and less all the time. Even though some of the voices of the ego will tell you, oh, don't be so present, you're going to get killed, you're going to be rejected, and so, and so on and so on. Don't pay much attention to that. But it's just a sign of a fear. The sign of being exposed is quite scary because you haven't been so present for a long time. That requires some courage and it requires also to live in truth. You're not going to do this if that longing is not there. So in the beginning, people sometimes give that back to me, like, well, now I'm present and now everybody shoots me. But well, that's because they don't know you. That's the first time maybe, or in a long time, that you are so present, so visible. And maybe that shows something that these people don't know. It takes some time for adjustment. It takes a while. But in my experience, it's, it's a very strong way to get your spiritual practice as a daily part, like a constant part of your daily life, and not so much the zooming in and out all the time.